How you guys? Welcome back to my channel, The Spiritual Justice Show. I'm Goddess Cleta, or you can call me Cleta. Either one would do. I answer to both. I am going to... I have notes here, and this video is a little different. It's the opposite of my twin flame union. Um, but we're just going to talk about overparenting your children. Okay. And when you overparent, it can... Um, Keep your child from being successful and confident. They lack the vital skills for life and they end up having mental health issues. Um, they uh, lack competent, competency. Um, they lack communication, uh, communication skills, interpersonal skills, relationship skills, and domestic home skills. Mental health I already said the mental health and personal skills, their decision-making skills, money and um, time management skills. And it, 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 when you do this, it teaches your child to be less responsible. Uh, it can create depression, anxiety, uh, emotional ir uh, reg uh, irregulation, meaning like bipolar. Um, it can create alcohol use, oppositional, defiant disorder, conduct disorder, and ADHD, Tourette syndrome, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, post-traumatic stress. Uh, if you fight your child's battles, you do their schoolwork for them. You coach their coaches. You keep your kids um, on a short leash. I know it's so hard because it, it, that 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 part is kind of hard um, because it's not really a guide to to that. That's a broad. You keep your child, your kids on a short leash because I, you know, depending on the age group that you know, it, 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 that's an age range. I think I'm not. I'm not saying it's um. For every you you wouldn't let your two or four or five year old just wander off by themselves and go you know to the park by themselves or you know what I'm saying you might let your five year old take a trash out you get what I'm saying and, and you watch from the step or you watch from your porch depending on the situation you get what I'm saying so that is very spectrum right there depending on the child's age. You are the maid in your own house, meaning you don't let your child do no chore. Your child to sit there, watch TV, every all their needs are met, everything is good. They have no balance. They just sit around. All they do is exist. That's it for you to love them. Um, you try to protect them from too much things. Like you don't let them experience life. You don't let them experience, okay, if you do that, then um, that's gonna cause you hurt or pain. So you, it's better for them to learn it as children than when they get up. And I'm not talking about neglect, abuse. I'm not talking about sexual situation. I'm not talking about nothing like that. I'm not talking about beating your kids. I'm not talking about whooping them. I'm not talking about none of that stuff. Just simple stuff like taking out the trash. Okay, if you misbehave, you got to come off the cell phone. If you misbehave, no screen time today. When you get done watching, um, eating your your food, you go th you go put your plate in the kitchen. You put it up in its proper place. However, you run your household, things like that. I'm not talking about discipline. I'm strictly talking about things that your age appropriate things. Let's put it on age appropriate chores, age appropriate uh, conversations, age appropriate uh, friends, things of that nature is what I'm talking about. Um, and if you're if you're just there and when they're having, you know. My daughter wants to go to the mall. She's 12. I will let her go in the mall with her friends, but I will be sitting in the parking lot. I wouldn't be in the mall with her every step of the way. You get what I'm saying? I wouldn't just be like, ooh, what you, you watching her. I wouldn't do that. I would take her to the mall so I know she's safe, give her a cell phone. I would sit in the, the parking lot and wait on her because that's just that's that that is an example of uh, what i would do if my my if my child was ever wanting to go to the mall with her friends i wouldn't just let her go with her friends i would sit in the parking lot i would be the one to drop her off because i don't trust other parents other parents on parent parent like i do if i get to know her friends and i like their parents and i like the way they they're, they're raising their child then okay i might be like hey my daughter's going to heather's house her mom and dad are really good with kids, so I trust her. I can call her, text her, but I'm not, oh, you shouldn't be, you know, I'm not just in her business 24-7. I give her space. I give her privacy. I don't just go read my daughter's journal. You know what I'm saying? If she's acting out, then I may. You know what I'm saying? So it's very, there's no guide to it. 
but it's very age appropriate things or you seen your child's behavior I might go read her diary out of concern for her health but if she's venting to her friends about me okay she needs that space to vent I'm not gonna be like oh don't tell your friends this no for the simple fact is she needs to vent but whatever she the, whatever way she sees me is what she sees me there's no change in that you get what I'm saying she can go vent to her friends and tell her friends whatever she needs to tell them I'm not gonna overparent her because that's her that's that part of, part of her life was to herself. Now she's abu abusing those and she's going out and doing things that she knows she shouldn't be doing and get you know getting caught up the police call still in line and doing other stuff like that. Of course I will revoke her her um, privileges, but she had to do something. She had to do something in order to get those taken away. It's scenarios like that. I think we as parents need more parenting classes for some people especially over parenters this get talks about the least and i think a lot of our kids are suffering because this get talks about the least of the least i never hear nobody talking about over parenting i never hear nobody talking about over love it's always what a child was missing what a child was doing some children are never missing anything you you know those kids that always got their hair done they always perfect you know they clothes they got joys they got uh the new sneakers they got new clothes every month they're they're well taken care of but they're some of the most horrible kids and you think it's because they're spoiled it is not because they're well they're to a certain depending on how you look at it they are spoiled but they lack discipline. They're being overparented when they're doing this because they feel like they're better than anybody. I've, I've met those kids. It's like your mom is in a good neighborhood. You're not in the ghetto. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not the. And I met some ghetto kids who didn't have much but were very appreciative, mannerable, and went to school, made good grades. They didn't have the best of the best, but they had peep parenting that balance, that was balanced, that, was, that gave them balance in their life. And that's the difference. Some parents over love their kids. Some parents over protect their kids. They over nurture. And we know how this happens. Um, it comes from the parent being abused in such a way and they're trying to protect their kids. They're not more so going to um, gonna keep up that type of abuse, but they over parent them so that, they, you know, when you feel like you are. Um, like I didn't have this growing up or I didn't have that but that's what made you who you are because you didn't have those things it made you a humble person you didn't have everything growing up you didn't have a lot of money but it kept you as a balanced human being sometimes not being rich not being famous is a good thing <laughs> not being a brat is a good thing not um, having the parent having a, a, a 9 to 5 or one parent being a state sometimes that is a good thing that's okay and that's an American dream because you're living a balance life it's not like your kids out here you know just you're just doing everything being the everything for them you're not made to be your kids everything because you know what your kids get older when they get older you know what they're going to be adults and all that stuff that you put into their psyche when they were younger is what they're going to carry into adulthood so you want that to be balanced if they learn how to be balanced human beings, you've done a great job. They may not have Christmas every Christmas, but you love them and you supported them. And when you did, you know, when you did get money or when you can't afford it, you did give them stuff. That teaches them balance. Believe it or not, it does. It teaches them balance. Not saying that everybody has to be poor or you can't have Christmas every year. I'm just giving an example of different uh, areas like me and my kids have never been homeless until last year. We never experienced home. We didn't know what it was like. Well, granted, I never judge homeless people, but it taught us how to be balanced. We were overdoing some stuff in our lives because we're not perfect. And I'm not going to display what we were overdoing because people like to do the most with spell word. But we were overdoing things in our life. And then God had to put perspective on our life. That's not why we were homeless, but it helped us to see and to understand more people people who are homeless better a lot of homeless people i met they said they're freer because they don't have no bills or nothing they can get up and go when they want to and and they were just free and most of them were single adults they was not they didn't have any kids and they they felt free they felt like they didn't have to live by anybody's rules you get what i'm saying it was very very minimal rules so um i'm just a messenger and i'm just giving you um 
tips, especially I have a lot of kids, people who have a lot of kids. This is very necessary. Even if you have one child, it's very necessary. That, those are the most people that's over parenting children with or parents with one child. They're the, the, the one. Most of the time they're over parented. Those that's statistically proven that people who are parents who only have one child are typically over parents. They're the, the ones that typically get overparent. Those children are the ones that typically get overparent. The ones that are just an only child. Though, and, and, and it's sneaky because you don't even know until they they don't even know that this is happening until they're like 30, 40. Then it starts to show up. You're like, what? I thought this person, this person come from a good background. It's why? Because this person came from a good background. This person didn't have no discipline. Didn't have no, 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 um, no, no balance in their emotions. You get what I'm saying? No consequences for their actions. They were just loved too much. I'm out, you guys. I will link um the the uh, websites that I get this information from. There's two of them that I put this information from, so you can read it for yourself and you can become a great parent, a, a balanced parent. Let's put that that way. We're gonna become ba- we're gonna be balanced parents. Ba- balance, balance is the key. All right, all right, I'm out, pace.